Now, from the station on your side, this is Wavy News 10. A Monday mess after a weekend many of us will never forget. Hurricane Matthews long gone, but the memories linger. People across the area are picking up and unfortunately will be doing so for days, weeks, and for some, months to come. What a massive cleanup effort this is turning into for millions of people, including here in Hampton Roads. From trees and power lines down everywhere to streets still flooded today, and there's a lot to do. Here are the headlines as we look at video today from Chopper 10. Two people are confirmed dead in Hampton Roads. One in Hampton, the other in a crash on 64 in Chesapeake Sunday morning. Eight were killed during Matthew in North Carolina. The curfew in Dare County has been lifted and there are some closings tomorrow. They're on the bottom of your screen. More than 70,000 people remain without power. Some folks still can't leave their neighborhood unless it's by boat. And flood warnings remain up for parts of our area. We have team coverage of Matthew's aftermath. Two reports tonight from some of the hardest hit areas. 10 on your side's Aaron Kelly is in Virginia Beach and Brandy Cummings has you covered in Chesapeake. First, back to the view though that you can only get from Chopper 10 and a look at what Matthew left behind in Virginia Beach. The damage and power outages are bad enough, right? But the city is also warning people that they're to watch your water use because the system is still in recovery mode tonight. 10 of your side's Aaron Kelly has been in Virginia Beach surveying the damage all day. Aaron. And we have covered a lot of storms, but this damage almost looks like a tornado came through. When you look around at the debris, a tree fell down and hit this home and kept going and it hit this one. And tonight, members of the community have been helping out. They've been salvaging what they can from this home. We were sleeping and um, we were actually thinking about going to a shelter, but we just said, okay, let's just stay here. I was soundly asleep, but I just woke up in an instant. You might have too if you heard the tree that crashed through Mercedes Nogales' home Saturday night with five people inside. I can't even describe it. It's like a really loud noise and, you know, it just shook everything like, like an earthquake. The same tree crushed the neighbor's home, too. No one was hurt. So on Monday, as Nogales looked at the damage around the bed where her daughter and mother normally sleep, but didn't that particular night, she remembered all she had left. I'm so glad we're, we're alive. I'm so glad they didn't get, my daughter was not hurt. Despite their loss, the family has had the help of First Hispanic Baptist Church of Virginia Beach. Since the sun came up after the storm, they've jumped on top of the cleanup. I'm doing okay, but um, like I said, I'm just thankful for all these people. On another street, a massive fallen tree barricaded Shirley Butt in her home nearly three days. And the tree started leaning, and I ran back in the house, and the tree fell. And when it did, I fell into the house next door, and it crushed my car. And uh, it was a very loud popping sound, like an explosion when, the, when it hit the car. When you look at the fact that this tree fell parallel to your house. I'm so lucky. I'm very fortunate to be here. And as far as we know, at the homes we visited today, no one was hurt. If you would like to learn more about how you can help out this family, we'll be putting that information for you on our website. For now, we're live in Virginia Beach. Aaron Kelly, 10 on your side. All right, thank you, Aaron. Next in our team coverage, we had the Chesapeake Chopper 10 shows us the scene from there. Dozens of roads remain closed tonight due to flooding and fallen trees. One of the hardest hit areas of the city still underwater tonight. The Culpeper Landing neighborhood in Deep Creek. To New your side's Brandy Cummings is there. Brandy? Yeah, guys, we are actually standing on the curb. You can see just how high this water is. At some part, parts, though, of the neighborhood, the water is actually above the knee. But the high water here making residents pretty upset because one of them told me when they purchased homes here, they were told it should never flood. This is only one of the problems, though, that people in Chesapeake are dealing with. There are also thousands of folks without power and water also causing a problem in a cemetery. High water in one neighborhood, down trees on a power line in another, even a casket in a church cemetery out of the ground. All of this left behind in Chesapeake now that Hurricane Matthew has come and gone. We were told that the storm wasn't coming and 
Um, Matthew changed his mind and came anyway, so we're making the best of it. It's been nearly 48 hours since Katie Moore and her family have had power. They're spending time getting to know their neighbors and doing all they can to survive. The one neighbor cooked dinner for a part of us yesterday. She has gas. So she was able to cook, and the rest of us just ate whatever we could. Peanut butter and jelly was good, and bananas and fruit and things like that. Water covers the streets in the Culpeper Landing neighborhood. Residents are taking their chances driving, biking, even walking through the high water. Yeah, I never thought that this would get this much water. When we walked here, it was below all the houses. So uh, it looks like it's just on the streets. More of an inconvenience than, than a true... Uh, you know, damage and, and problem. We met neighbors Adam Wagler and Jacob Siegel on their way back home from the grocery store. City officials say the flooding here is made worse by the fact that the Dismal Swamp Canal, where the neighborhood normally drains, is two feet higher than normal elevation. But despite the challenges, residents are still grateful. We're thankful that it wasn't, uh, no one was hurt, no damage was done as far as homes and to people. So we're very thankful for that. And tonight, the city of Chesapeake is asking residents to simply be patient as they work to try to clean up the city. Now, we are putting resources on our website, wavy.com, on how residents here in the city of Chesapeake can contact the city for all non-emergencies. For now, live in Chesapeake, I'm Brandi Cummings, 10 on your side. All right, to Norfolk now, where there are more than 100 trees down across the city. This is a neighborhood in Bayview, within a half mile, six large trees knocked down by the storms here five on top of houses crews began the extensive cleanup today and one homeowner said he found a silver lining in the damage to his home we're extremely lucky yeah i'm blessed of course and our neighbors are being very nice about this you know we were able to park at our in our neighbor's uh lawn our, our neighbor over there is lending us tools and all that stuff everyone's really coming together hey, it was the garage at tony lewis's home that was hit City crews are asking for patience as they remove trees and clean up throughout the city. Also in Norfolk, progress is being made on one of the underpasses filled to the top by water from Hurricane Matthew. This is on Virginia Beach Boulevard in the city. When the water was finally drained to a more reasonable level, the city found several vehicles in there. Needless to say, those cars, probably a total loss. Now to Portsmouth, where people living in the Swanson Homes area are mopping up today. They still have no power. Residents saw more than two feet of water inside their homes. We spoke with the interim executive director of the Portsmouth Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Their office is closed today for Columbus Day, but she says once electricity goes back on, they'll be bringing in vacuums to help people clean up water in their homes. And in the Outer Banks, another major repair project for NC-12 after Matthew does some major damage once again. Ten on your side in Kitty Hawk, where overwash caused parts of the always vulnerable road to collapse. Officials there estimate that 125 yards of the road caved in. Many side roads are also flooded along the Outer Banks. It could be three weeks before 12 is repaired. They're hoping a sand replenishment plan for spring will make an extra buffer. And as we said just moments ago, tens of thousands are still waiting for the lights to come back on. Dominion now says everyone should have power back by 11 o'clock Thursday night, but most will be restored before then. As of this afternoon, more than 80% of people had their power back. Nearly a half million customers lost power over the weekend. About 72,000 are still in the dark in Hampton Roads, 22,000 in northern North Carolina. Wavy.com and especially our mobile app are your lifelines. If you don't have power, we'll keep you updated on the situation with getting the lights back on, as well as road closures and closings and delays. Plus, your pictures of the storm on the photo galleries page. And NBC Nightly News will have more on the damage from Matthew up and down the East Coast right after this newscast. The good news, the sun is out and helping to dry things out. But some rivers are still rising. And that is what Chief Meteorologist Don Slater is tracking tonight, Don. Yeah, the river's rising with all the with all the water that we have, the rainwater especially, and of course the uh, tidal water flowing up into the rivers. It hasn't been horrible. As we look towards Southampton County, uh, towards Seabro, some of these areas, uh, Cortland, we're not seeing huge flooding, uh, but there is a little bit of standing water here and there. It's very, very minor, so I'm not real, real concerned about it. Even though there are flood warnings, it's really, really minor. The only major flooding going on is outside of our viewing area, and that is at Windsor, North Carolina, and that's where they've had that serious, serious flooding going on. Now, for our area, as far as tidal, for, uh, tidal flooding, we just had a high tide around quarter to five, and it was only around uh, 4.5, or around uh, nuisance tidal flooding. 
The biggest thing going on during the overnight hours, temperatures overnight, they drop into the mid-40s into a few inland areas. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some very pleasant autumn weather to come and the fact that everything is gone. We'll tell you about it in just a few minutes. Also ahead for you.